Hi Year 5, it's Mrs Lawrence and today I'm going to be doing a quick spag video on adverbs for degrees of possibility, one of the new skills on our 5.3 writing ladder. So to begin with I'm just going to do a quick recap of things that we already know about verbs and adverbs and modal verbs and the things that we've learned in Year 5 so far. So all the way back in Key Stage 1 we learned about verbs and adverbs. A verb is a doing word or an action word and an adverb describes that verb. And then when we started in year five, our first writing ladder, we were looking at adverbials for time and place. And we were trying to link our paragraph. So starting off our writing with a time or a place adverbial. Then in Lent term, we went to a range of adverbials. So we're looking at manner, degree and frequency adverbials as well. And we also began to think about modal verbs. Now, remember, a modal verb is a special type of verb and it can show the ability to do something, obligation or permission or the level of possibility. And here are some of our common modal verbs here. So we have would, should, could, can, will, shall, must, may, might, and ought. So that's a bit of a quick recap. Now we're going to think about how we can use adverbs to show degrees of possibility. So like we've just said, we have modal verbs for possibility. So the words may, might, and will, they are a special type of verb, they're modal verbs. And we also have adverbs to describe the possibility of something happening as well. And we've got some examples down here. So adverbs for possibility, they describe the likelihood or the certainty of something happening, the possibility of something happening. So they're a really useful tool for us to use in our writing, particularly in persuasive texts, because it really um, gives more of an impact on the reader. So I'm going to sort of order them on my scale here from least certain to most certain. So there's no right or wrong answer to this. So I'm just going to start moving them onto my sheet. So the words that stick out to me straight away are definitely and certainly they're probably our strongest adverbs on there. Definitely and certainly they have a really strong sense of certainty in those words. Um, I think possibly obviously as well. That's quite a strong one. Clearly, if something is clearly going to happen, that's quite a strong adverb. Surely, might be a little less certain. Um, if something's probably going to happen, then it sounds like they're not too sure whether it will. It's probably going to happen. If something possibly may happen. I think that's a bit less likely. And maybe and perhaps, I think, are probably one of the least certain ones that we've got there. So like I said, there's no right or wrong answer there. You could mix those up if you, if you wanted to. Maybe you might want to have a go at making this yourself at home, just so you've got an idea of what they are in your head, so that you've got um, a, piece of write, a piece of work to go back to when you're doing your own writing as well. So now I'm going to show you in a piece of writing how the modal verbs for possibility and these adverbs for possibility work together. So I've done a short piece of writing about life in lockdown and the benefits of life in lockdown, even though it must, sometimes doesn't seem like there are that many. So I'm going to highlight the modal verbs that I've included and the adverbs for possibility that I've used with these modal verbs. So they sort of pair together, work together. Remember, adverbs describe verbs. So you can use your adverbs for possibility alongside your modal verbs. Now, it's worth pointing out that I've written this piece of writing to show you how to use lots of different adverbs for possibility. So you probably wouldn't use this many in a normal piece of writing because you've got all of your other writing ladder skills to be thinking about fitting in as well. So I'm going to go through each part and I'm going to highlight the modal verbs and the adverbs for possibility and hopefully you'll have a better idea of how to use them yourself. So if we have a look at this first introduction, it says throughout the lockdown, you will probably have had to make many changes to your life. So we've got the modal verb will and the modal verb can in our next sentence. Though it can sometimes be hard, life in lockdown has its benefits too. So with the word will we have you will probably have had to make many changes to your life. And though it sometimes can be hard, it can sometimes be hard, life in lockdown has its benefits too. So we've got our Modal verbs will and can and our adverse possibility probably and sometimes there as well. So moving on to the next paragraph, we have obviously as a adverb possibility. Obviously, we rarely 
get the chance to spend so much time at home, meaning that we can enjoy real quality time with our families. So we have the mode of the can in there as well. Many people are also learning new skills and taking time out of their busy lives to get fit. Perhaps you could learn a new language, how to bake or the rules of a new sport. So again there we've got our modal verb could and our adverb possibility perhaps you could. So again it's sort of suggesting to the reader something, not telling them that they are definitely going to do it but giving them that option of perhaps you could do this. Then I've put, I have loved learning, I have loved baking some delicious cakes and you'll see how I've used my brackets there, that's extra information there and a whole sentence of extra information so my brackets go around that whole sentence there. Remember we've got our other video on brackets and dashes so if you want to recap of that go and have a look at that on YouTube too. The lack of cars on the road will, clear, will clearly bring many benefits for the environment too, as there is surely less pollution than there would have been without the lockdown. So we have our modal verb will there, will clearly bring many benefits. So instead of just saying it will bring benefits, saying it will clearly bring benefits. So like we were saying about our impact that we're having on our reader, it's just getting the reader to really agree with me um, and like we said for persuasive text it's really useful as a tool to persuade people. So we'll clearly bring many benefits for the environment as there is surely less pollution. So surely less pollution than there would have been without the lockdown. So again the modal verb and the adverb for possibility working together there. Then in our last paragraph, we've got starting off with an adverbial phrase. When the lockdown finally comes to an end, I will definitely need to visit all my friends. So again, our modal verb will. I will definitely need to visit all my friends. There will doubtless be parties and certainly lots of hugs. So again, I'm using that modal verb will again. And then we have the word doubtless, another one of our adverbs for possibility and certainly. We ought to work together, our modal verb, we ought to work together so we never let this happen again. But maybe we might look back on lockdown and remember the positives of a less busy world. So we ought to work together so we never let this happen again. We have our modal verb ought and our adverb never. And then down here we have the modal verb might, we might look back on lockdown and our adverb for possibility, maybe we might look back on lockdown and remember the positives of a less busy world. So you can sort of see how the modal verbs and the adverbs work together to create different effects, will probably, will clearly. So think about how you use them, to uh, the, the impact that you want to have to create for your reader and that will help you sort of decide which adverbs for possibility you will use with your modal verbs. So I really hope that helps you. Um, let me know how you get on and I'd love to see any pieces of writing that you do. See you soon.